Hello, and welcome to our live stream podcast, How to Artists. Thank you for joining us. We know you could be anywhere on social media right now, and we appreciate you being here with us. So let's get started. On this episode, today's conversation will focus on how artists pivot. But before we jump into that conversation, let's um, take a few minutes to introduce ourselves, our show, and what you as our listeners can expect from this new podcast. My name is Carlana Pedersen, and I am a professional contemporary artist and illustrator working here in the Chicago area. I am joined by co-host, musician, and producer, Ryan Caldwell. Hello, Carlana, and thank you for the introduction. As Carlana mentioned before, this is a live stream podcast, which means our show will live stream once per week, and our show's audio will be uploaded as our podcast. Our show will record as seasons with weekly live streamed episodes. This show is season one, episode one. We broadcast our show live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central simultaneously on our social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, but not YouTube today, but that's for different reasons. Afterwards, the video from our broadcast will be available to re-watch the next day on those same social media accounts. The audio from our live broadcast will then be uploaded to all of the major podcasting services. So if you can follow us on your social media accounts or those social media accounts, you will get notified automatically. Our show will have two main parts per episode. This includes conversations with our guests at the beginning of each episode, focusing on a single topic, along with our guest Q&A session towards the end. So post your best questions during our live broadcast, and we will discuss those questions with our guests in real time. During our guest conversations, we will speak with various artists and creatives to discuss how do artists work, live, create, run a business, navigate their personal life, or handle challenges and adversity, all with the hope of providing our listeners with not only interesting conversations, but hopefully provide some aspects of learning as well. How do we as creatives maintain not only our businesses, but sustain and nurture our overall well-being? Therefore, guests on our show will be encouraged to answer these questions from both a professional and personal perspective. Now that we've got everyone a clear synopsis of our podcast, let's get started. Today's question is, how do artists pivot? How do artists pivot? That's a fantastic uh, question, isn't it? How do artists pivot? When we talk about pivot, why don't we talk about what that means uh, in terms of that dialogue? Right. Because it could mean a, a bunch of different things, right? I think when we talk about pivot, we're specifically talking about what did we do in our personal and professional lives to change, to create, to or, or to move in a different direction because uh, maybe with everything going on in COVID and with circumstances being as they are, a lot of times we have to look at what's going on and make those changes. What did you do to make those changes? Did you do anything to make those changes? Was that something that was on your radar? Well, that's that's definitely a thing. I mean, so for instance, I didn't expect that I'd be making a podcast in 2020. That's one thing I did to pivot. And so, but you know, here we are. Um, yeah, but right. Not, but I mean, there's a bunch of things like the place. Um, one of the one of the sources of income I had as a musician is I was teaching private lessons. I was teaching at, uh, at a recording, kind of a rec modern recording studio teaching program. But, you know, because of the COVID crisis, that whole thing just closed down. They did not pivot. And mm. so because of that, I had to pivot and spin in several different directions simultaneously. But, you know, because of that, I was able to go and really lean, in, re lean a lot harder into my recording studio and my production work um, and just stuff like that. But, you know. Oh, yeah. No, that's. I think that's true for a lot of people. I think that COVID especially kind of brought us to a place where we had to make some decisions and we had to figure out, are we, are we going to just kind of move in a different direction that needs to, to happen so that we can not only just survive, but succeed. And I think that's an interesting 
it's an interesting conversation to have. Um, oh, for sure, yeah. I've known a couple of photographers that had to think out outside the box just so that they could continue their work. And they decided to start doing um, Zoom photo sessions. They how, how they, does that how does that even work? They made it work somehow during the very beginning of COVID. Now they're not doing it right now, but at the at the beginning of COVID, they would go on a Zoom meeting and and pose the send a list of things that needed to happen on the client side and they would ask them to create certain scenes in their home or whatever and tell them how they should pose and and <laughs> and like did these these um pictures and I'm not exactly sure how the end result looked but <laughs> I thought it was pretty creative Which, that, that, I thought it was that's really whole... creative well, and that's kind of one of the weirdest parts of the of like yeah that the the concept of pivoting is that it's not it's not always an apples to apples sort of thing. You're not always just using your exact skill in just moving the location or moving the venue. I mean, I got lucky and I was able to just do that. But that being said, you know that sort of photography stuff that sounds way more like well now you're just a photography consultant. <laughs> maybe maybe a little bit. Um, I'm sure they. I'm not exactly sure ex how it materialized in terms of from beginning to the end and, and what was the tangible product towards the end, but it kept them going for a while. I think it was because it was new and it, they marketed it the right way and they were able to act quickly. They were able to yeah. pivot quickly. And I think that was something that a, a few of them uh, there was a blog about it and a, it caught on a little bit. And right. I think that might have helped. At least I know one photographer that was doing it. Right. And as for myself, um, it, the, the whole thing with COVID was, it was it, not only was it strange for everyone, but we were in Minnesota for a long time and then we moved back to Chicago. And so I had already created a process for my company so that I could make those changes if I needed to. Right. So I had already spent um, probably a year and a half, two years, creating all of my operations and placing those operations and, and the processes online and being able to work with vendors and finding vendors that were able to help me or, um, be able to facilitate what I needed all online so that I could literally just go from, you know, state to state if I needed to, or be online and reach anyone in the country if I needed to. And so when COVID hit, I had already had these things in place and was already, had already activated them because I had moved. So in January, I was already taking on clients and then COVID hit and I still kind of kept chugging along. It wasn't a hundred percent, but it went down probably because of COVID maybe, um, maybe half. Um, yeah. but I was still, I was still moving along. Whereas some of my, some of my colleagues were, were really um, devastated for a, a good few months. Um, before they were able to sort of pick up and now we're headed into the second wave. Um, so it's <laughs> a little, it's a little nerve wracking, I think for everyone. So, oh, you know, sure. being that question now that we kind of know how it was mm -hmm. with the first wave, what are we, you know, what are we doing? Are you, are you doing anything different headed and protecting yourself in some way for pivoting or making those changes for the second wave? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, it's well, and it's 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 kind of interesting because I was just what I, I think that a lot of artists are just good at pivoting on the spot and being able to go and change everything on the fly, just because you know everything in the industry is always changing. If you stay too static or too fixed into one concept of how your business model has to run or anything like that, then it's 
I mean, it's kind of like, it's like a tree. If you're too brittle, you just kind of go, if, the, if things get too tough, you just snap and you're done. You have to, yeah, you have to maintain, be incredibly flexible. And I suppose that's basically the same thing I'm going to be doing. It's, and it, you know, I, that, that was a lie. I am going to change some of my approach for the second, you know, coming of the quarantine. <laughs> but, yeah. um, but it's, uh, most of my approach now is I'm trying to really get my social, my entire social media thing in gear. I'm trying to go and take myself more seriously like that. Um, I'm also trying to reframe how to sell music. Because selling selling music is vastly different than it was, you know, even five years ago. And it's just being able to sustain yourself off of that is not easy. And specifically to the point where nowadays with how you consume music, music has become like a, at least a little bit worthless. Wow. <laughs> is, Did which you is say really worthless? Which no. is really it's it's a little well, it's it's worthless from a monetary standpoint. No. No. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't it doesn't have to be, but just if you no. make if you make a song, it's not like you can just go and sell the song. I mean, at least when artists can go and perform live, even if no one knows their music, chances are you can convince someone who owns a restaurant of some caliber or sort to go and let you play there for some amount of money. But now with quarantine, that option's not really on the table. So you have to go and look at, okay, well, how do I get fans some other way? How do I go and market my music some other way? And, you know the actual like the the pennies that you get from streaming unless you're a massively successful artist you don't get a you don't get a lot of money that way so it's not it's interesting because although making music is still a part of your product and your package you nowadays you kind of have to be selling a lot more than just that not like you have to go to start selling sprinklers or something but um you have to go and Basically, you have to market yourself like a brand or a lifestyle or at least have auxiliary things and ways people can support you. Um, one a really great bunch of people who did that was the guys who started Patreon. The um, was it the lead guy behind that was the producer for Pumplemus. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's the CEO of Patreon. <laughs> Well, wow. and I have friends, of course, on Patreon. I think we all well, do. Well, yeah, because they basically saw the writing on the wall with this sort of stuff and said, as as just as artists and musicians and everyone, we have to find a different way of going and getting support from the people who really value what we do. And that is not unlike what I do in the visual arts industry that I'm in. It's not enough to just um, have a it's not enough just to, to be able to paint and draw. You really do have to know. Right. You have to, you have to pivot into more of a business atmosphere and understanding what that means and being able to figure out how to navigate those waters. Cause there's a whole lot of fish in that sea with you. Oh yeah. And so it's, it's not it's not just enough to be able to and i think that's like the biggest thing that as i think as a creative i had to wrap my brain around you know i'd love to just sit and do you know paint and play with my my acrylics all day right and that would be so <laughs> nice no to... I'm, I'm i'm in the same boat i mean that's actually something i did take advantage of at the beginning of quarantine i got to go and sit down and was like well yeah. all i have is time now what yeah. do i want to be doing and it ended up being i'm just gonna work on a bunch of songs that have been rotting on my hard drive for the past you know <laughs> four or five years <laughs> and i did the same i probably have maybe a hundred um really quality pieces of art that i created over the past few months since quarantine because I I you know everything kind of slowed down but now you know now everything is picking up again oh yeah but but it's not in the industry it's it's not just enough to to be able to to have a, a fantastic song or a fantastic um, piece of art because the one thing I've learned over being you know by being on the internet for now what years right. is everyone a anyone can sing like mariah carey <laughs> or paint like freaking da vinci i mean you're like where there used to be a time when everybody you, you used to come across these fantastic singers and you and you'd say oh my gosh they're like, you know, one in a million. I'm never going to find this a singer <laughs> like this again because, you know, they fell out of a tree somewhere. 
And now because we have the internet and everyone is so connected to everyone and everyone can see everything and everyone, every, there is so much talent out there. Well, and that's, and, you know, I love the, the term you use, which is one in a million, because I just looked it up and there are seven point five billion people on the planet. So, yeah every million there, there's a lot of millions <laughs> there's a lot of millions but in the music industry come on you know this in the music yeah. industry if you had someone that's saying that had the three octaves like Minnie Rippleton you know the who was the, who was the next person after that Mariah Carey she's got what a three range octave and and three. people were like oh my gosh she's fantastic but now yeah. you go on the internet and there's a lot of people out there Oh yeah. That have these fantastic voices that you thought were more of an anomaly before. And to my point, it you have to figure out how to pivot. And if it's not working <laughs> in one area, if you're not able to succeed doing one thing, we have to be able to switch and switch fast and move on a dime and Right go into something else, you know, change your style, change your art, change something that connects with people and is able to propel you forward, well, and which is the purpose of pivoting. Oh, yeah. Well, one interesting thing I was thinking of is the, just the like that that conversation. Well, so you're talking about how many amazing people there are. Well, now that we have no choice to be, but to be stuck inside and all we have is time and weekends. Um <clears throat> Yeah. What one thing I've noticed is that every single musician I know is they're they're all getting their recording rig set up. They're all, you know, anyone who's procrastinating on that or hadn't really figured out the kinks and the bugs, they're going and they're nailing it down. They're like, "Okay, I want to figure out how to get this all working so that they can go and start collaborating with people." Like I uh this year specifically, I've I've worked with I think I've recorded more different artists or I've at least had more different artists on my tracks than ever before, just because, oh, I can just go and ship my, ship my drums off to Tony, or I can go and, uh, I can go and like throw a guitar track over. I can get someone to go and record vocals on their own. And it just makes collaboration surprisingly faster and easier. Yeah. Being yeah. online, you're saying. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even like most of our collaboration, actually almost all of our collaboration has been completely online. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, right after things got bad and we had to move to Zoom, I was just thinking that along the same lines of what you just said a few days ago, I was thinking, oh my gosh, what is going to happen to my schedule when COVID disappears? <laughs> right. And we can all <laughs> go back to normal and have family functions and actually have business meetings with people face to face what is going to happen then my schedule uh, will would be crazy because now i literally can be almost in two places at once mm -hmm. i can i can be on a zoom call in with someone in california in in five minutes and then i can turn around literally three minutes later and be on a zoom call with somebody else somewhere else apart you know in the country oh, and yeah. it's just it's just crazy. Like even, even locally, that's like the best part of zoom for me is <laughs> having the ability to be able to meet rapid fire and still feel like you are still connecting with someone in oh, yeah. some way, Yeah. you know, as opposed to just a quick phone call. And I mean, so I get to see that person, I get to talk with them. So I, I do like the concept of zoom. I just wish it was um, in a different circumstance. Of course, I think we all oh, do. Right. But well, but the funny thing is, I think you're right, and I don't think any of that stuff's going away. I think that now that this kind of door has been open, a lot of people are like, "Well, I think it's I think post COVID life, you know, provided that comes, it probably will. It probably will. <laughs> but uh, post COVID, when post COVID life gets here, it's like the gigs are going to open back up. But I'm pretty sure people are still going to keep, you know, collaborating online like they do. And especially especially when you also bring the like just the social media aspect of it in, into place most of what i i was gonna say most of what makes social media work and really i guess what what makes it really thrive is collaboration it only works if you're sharing stuff with people who want to see it or if you're working on things with people together and stuff like that 
I agree. I think for meetings, for collaborations, I think um, Zoom's going to stay stay where it is right. for the most part. I think it's ingrained in our culture now. I will say though, there's certain aspects of it that I I'm, I can't wait to get back to normal, like art fairs. There, I mean, <laughs> physically seeing art on the oh, wall yeah. and purchasing art on the wall. There's just, in my opinion, as an artist, there's really no experience that compares to that, oh, especially sure. when you work with textiles and feelings and, 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 you know, granular, you know, textures and things. It's just, it, it does lose something on zoom, but again, it's all about what we have to do to keep up. So I'm, I'm very happy that at least there have been um, a lot of people that I know that are doing zoom art shows, which are a really creative way of getting your oh, yeah. art out there and collaborating with other artists and, and connecting on zoom and then holding art shows. So, you know, just in much in the same way that musicians are collaborating, artists and visual artists are doing that oh, yeah. as well. Well, and it's, it's interesting that you, you, I mean, like the art show thing, it's every, every musician I know is going to be really happy when they can go and convince a bar to let them do more than just a solo, like a solo acoustic gig. Right. <laughs> like I know that um, one of the bands I'm in, Invisible Cartoons, we've gotten to play this year. Um, Did you? Not, we did. We did. We got <laughs> we got to play, but not very much. We were this year we were ramping up to go and like play at least 50, 60 shows. Right. And we already had a bunch of them booked like at the start of the year. Um so it's going to be it's gonna be a lot different doing that. It's been weird just because it's been that, you know, their the invisible cartoons grind is pretty relentless. Our lead singer just books like, you know, wildfire. Yeah. Um, so it's going to it's going to be definitely interesting when that happens again. I think everyone's going to be super happy just because, yeah. you know, even though there's like there's been a lot of really creative solutions and everyone's you know been trying to do live stream concerts and stuff like that. It's still not it's not quite the same. It's just an entirely different experience. Well, the music industry has certainly pivoted for sure. Um, the AMAs, the American Music Awards that are coming oh, yeah. out, um, that's all virtual, isn't it? I think. All the guests that are on there, for the most part, are virtual performances. Even the performances that are on like late night now. Uh, oh shows, yeah, yeah. Like I saw Stephen I Colbert. Like, and there, um, I just saw a fantastic show, uh, virtual performance by mm -hmm. Kylie Minogue, and I was just blown away. I'm like, that is just fantastic. I mean, it was, but it's it's it is pivoting and and the music industry had to figure it out on the fly and so <laughs> and we're all trying to figure it out so then to that point and you having to figure it out and you having to um deal with the fact that you wanted to move faster than than your than the business that you were involved with um right. how did pivoting cause you anxiety well, yeah, pivoting causes everyone. Who, who, who just like who loves change? <laughs> well, then I won't tell you that. <laughs> I do like change. I'm, well, I'm totally fine with change. Well, and, and it's I mean, people, it, it's change is kind of a double edged sword because, I mean, as much as people love like people love new things, people love novelty. Change gives you that, but then change also gives you the other thing, something that people are deathly afraid of, which is loss. People hate losing things, you know, there, there, and there's, everyone can think of examples of that. Anytime you have to lose something is just a terrible, it's a terrible day. Whether it's, you know, like you, you lost, you know, you lost money, you lost a bet, you, you know, lost a, <laughs> lost <job>. a bet. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Minnesota back in 2013. I had a great business here. It was doing fine. And I moved to Minnesota, happy to do it. It was a family decision. And literally my business fell apart. And I realized that it was because you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it, right? As, as, as my grandmother used to say. My grandmother mm -hmm. said, you don't know what you don't know until you don't know it. <laughs> Write a book and, on what you don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and 
what I realized was I, I needed to, I needed to go back and actually learn what I was taking for granted. And, and I pivoted in that respect that I, I lost, you know, uh, thank God I didn't have to, um, thank God I didn't have to go bankrupt or anything like that. Um, which that, that's a huge deal, but, oh yeah, um, I learned so much from that pivot. Oh, yeah. I don't think I would have ever gotten to this pivot had I not fallen flat on my face and and lost that first business as a result of just understanding that I didn't really have a business. It was more <laughs> like a, it was, it was, I mean, it was an LLC, but I didn't, at, at the time, I didn't know what, I, I mean, I was working, I was, I had a lot you know, a lot of clients and things were doing great and everything. But when I pulled myself out of that, away from that base of clients and that base of everything and all the support, I, I had to figure out how was I going to do this 100% on my own and run right. this as an actual company. And that's where <laughs> I had to go back and learn, you know, go back and, and learn business, go back to school and, 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 and take those, those courses and, and, you know, sign up with the small business association and Which start is something from... that every artist dreams about. You're right. Yeah, exactly. they pick up a paintbrush. Exactly. Up with the small business association. Going. Yeah, exactly. And, and, but I think it made me um, a better artist in the sense that I feel well-rounded because I know, right not only about my craft, which I went to school for, and I had all that education. Yeah. I needed the education to support the business of art. So, um, yeah, that was a, a huge pivot. And that, I, I took a year off to do that. That was yeah. um, a lot of stress and anxiety, oh, uh, of course. It. But but, but not I mean, because of the change. Well, and it's also, I mean, a calm sea has never made a skilled sailor. I love that one because it's That's it's pretty true. accurate. Like you, you're you you're only as good as the challenges you overcome. <laughs> that's that's absolutely true, and 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 you can't you can't have a testimony without a test. Yeah. So so <laughs> it how you can't testify without a test. So it's that's true. It's um. Well, and hey, speaking of tests, I think there might be some questions. Oh, let's because get now to we it. enter our Q and A segment. Yay! <laughs> we get to interact with people, which is at least half the point of this. Um, Absolutely. All right. So, everyone, please, anyone who's still watching. Oh, we have eight people. Oh, I shouldn't say that. But the um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, we uh, we're we're looking for questions about pivoting, comments, things you want to talk about, things you want us to talk about. Anyone? Well, currently, Cena Wright has a great question for us. It's, have you noticed a shift since COVID where for-profit businesses are being supported by the artistic abilities of artists as opposed to the older concept uh, of for-profit supporting the artist? Where for-profit businesses are being supported by the artist's abilities for artists. Okay, I think you're asking, a, are you talking, I'm not exactly sure if, if I understand that correctly. It sounds to me as if you're asking about companies that are um, making money off of artists. Um, yeah, there's, if, if that's the question that you're asking, there is a big shift of of companies making <laughs> companies making money off of of artists and artists um, artists creatives anyone who is struggling in their business or needs help everybody has got something out there to sell so uh, I think there has been an increase of that through COVID you just I feel like you have to kind of weed through that. I don't really, I don't really subscribe to a lot of those advertisements or um, 
uh, you know, those, those ad, those ads that are always on Facebook, you have to really know what <laughs> yeah. it is you want. You have to know what direction you need to go in. And maybe if someone can help do that for people, that's a value added um, service because there's a lot of people, a lot of creatives that aren't exactly sure where they should pivot or what they should do. And I think if you can find solid people that can help direct your career or your business, that's always a good thing. I don't think um, a whole lot of money should be spent on a lot of marketing things unless again, you have a plan. Well, yeah, you need to have a plan. Well, and so what everybody's selling marketing. Oh, yeah, of course. And you know, digital marketing is such a, a lovely you know catch-all nowadays. It's one one of, one of my friends. Whenever he's hearing a business plan, and it's like, well, how are you going to market it? Well, well, social media. He immediately will just tune out everything else they say because, like, if that's all you have in that particular bucket, you have no idea what you're going to do. <laughs> but the um one one of the one one of the interesting things I'm thinking about seeing his comment is um. I'm I'm thinking a lot of a uh, lot of uh, venues right now because venues and bars and all all these places are hurting the most because their entire business model is completely dysfunctional now. They have no way like un unless they're willing to go and set up a streaming setup, they're dead in the water. And even with the streaming setup, most of the revenue, which is alcohol sales, is just is still out of the water. It's not like they can just drone that over. <laughs> So now it's now more than ever, they're looking at, they're looking at musicians, you know, it's, well, at least in the times when you could have performances being like, oh, we got to support each other. Come on back in, you know? And before it was like, no, we're giving you $30 and you don't get free beer. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's just that I, I've seen that shift. That's, that's been a, that's been a pretty big shift now that, you know, now the chip, the chips are kind of down. There's a lot of, there, there's a lot of, venues that you know people have had nefarious relationships with that are now very buddy buddy that wouldn't give you the time of day before but it's wow. just you know but i mean that being said every you know every venue is struggling and they're all looking to try to go and get any of what they had back so they don't have to close down it's yeah yeah and so even even to the point where some of them are you know they're they're saying well i don't like this lockdown order and we're going to stay open you know regardless it's yeah, I mean it's a massive public health risk to do that, but you know it's you're getting in between people and their small bit like you're getting in between people and their small business that they've made. It's like making it's like making up making a small child. <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to see it you don't want to see it die. And if you can do something to prevent that, then you know you you might not do what's best for the rest of the population. <laughs> I think everybody feels as if their business is their baby, and I. I and that can be that it, it's it's difficult. It, it is absolutely difficult. And and to that point, I know we've got a couple of questions about that. And I just want to say, oh. you know, some shout outs to people, too, for sure. Um, ah! Gerald and Kaylin and Christina. <laughs> well, and, and actually, speaking of Christina, she had a question for us. How is the pandemic influencing your creative process? Oh, Carlotta, Good. how creative have you been during this pandemic? <laughs> I have done a lot of art. Um, when I had a little bit more of a downtime, I was doing a lot of art. I was doing some experimenting and I was doing uh, a lot of digital art. And so, yes, I, I did have time to do a little bit more than what I probably normally do. And as a result, I've tried to include days where I am still continuing to create because I don't want... Because it is, it's a balancing act. It's a, it's a, it's a tightrope, you know, especially when you have a family and, and family always comes first and your business drives your creativity because you're in the business of art and you need to get that out and, and, and do what that takes so that you can, right you know, have a business and sell. And so it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of aspects to that, that you're juggling all at once. Oh, yeah. So in terms of creativity, it was, it was good and it was bad. I mean, COVID is bad. <laughs> COVID's bad. So, you know, the only but good change thing. change is good. <laughs> but I like change. I'm okay. I do. I think change is exhilarating. I'm always doing oh, something is. that makes me scared. 
Um, and I think that's important. Like brushing and... your teeth with the wrong hand, you know? <laughs> really? Oh, I mean, well, have you tried it before? <laughs> or are you no. too scared to brush your teeth with the wrong hand? No, no, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably too OCD to do that, but <laughs> now that's a that that's a whole different topic <laughs> that's a different topic we'll, we'll save um, that for later well but but i know that my my creative process has been changed a lot well i mean not not a ton but it's definitely been very affected by having having gone pivot like this i mean i've i've one, one of the things i was doing is i was going and staying i have this tiny little uh synthesizer groove box that i've been you know going and making different loops on and stuff like that Fun. late at you know late at night you know when i'm trying to go and make my brain shut off um oh. but i but and i've but at the same so i've been doing stuff like that which is just you know very easy free form i can just go and crank out something in a few minutes it's yeah, it's fantastic. To the uh, to the other end of the spectrum, where I've started trying to do some stock music with um, one of my friends, Dylan Schweitzer, and it's it, that that's been and when we were really cranking like super hard on that for the last you know maybe two months, we were going and meeting meeting up, and we were you know going and just plowing like plowing through all these different prompts of you know songs and pieces we were going to make, and that was more of the like the brute force sort of creativity that you only get when you are forced to be creative and right. both, you know, and, and both, both things are interesting, but it's one of it's, I, I've thought I, I've reflected upon, like, I wasn't doing that last year. Last year was an entirely different array of things, but it's, you know, when, when you start opening yourself up to different like avenues of using your art, it goes and it changes how you interact with it and how you have to be creative. I'm no longer forced to go and have to stand on stage and improvise a solo. I now have to go and just make, you know, write new stuff. It uses a different part of your brain? Uh, I mean, it's kind of. It's more like different application of the same part of your brain. Like, I think creativity is kind of like a muscle. The more you use it, the more you get. Yeah, you I agree to, with that. But not everything you get is going to be good. <laughs> and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Not everything you spit out into the earth is going to be worthy <laughs> worthy of 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 payment or sale <laughs> or sometimes you just create because it's something that needs to have happen it needs to be it needs to come to into creation in some way oh for sure and and no one you don't care if anyone appreciates it or not it's sometimes just... yeah sometimes things just get vomited into the world <laughs> just compulsively it just happens you know <laughs> such a such a wonderful visual i'm no a visual one, person so no I'm... one ever likes that one no one ever likes that one yeah I don't <laughs> but it's the, like but it, it's the most but it's the most accurate way i can think about it i mean there's some times where i have to go and pull a pull a song out like a like a nail but there's other times i have i it just completely happens one spree i write an entire song in 15 minutes you know wow that's that's cool that you can do that. Yeah. Well, I well it, when when they're good, that that's when it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can also write bad songs in fifteen minutes. Well, I, and and are they are they really bad, or did you just did you learn something from it? <laughs> oh, I right? learned tons of things from bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like watching a lot of bad movies. I learned lots of things from those. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one more question here. Do we? Well, um, did we ask? Did we? Yeah, we we already aired Christina's question. I think we might be out of questions, and thusly, we are almost at the end of our allotted streaming time. I see that we, we are, are almost at our forty-five minute cutoff. And yes, <laughs> if you know, you only have to you only have to listen to us for forty-five minutes for this podcast to be a collaborative process. That's right. Yeah. Oh, oh, Yay. wait. We do have one more. Um, <laughs> Chris is going to try to brush his teeth with his left hand, but you have to, you got to keep Which, that neuroplasticity up. I like that. You got to keep, got to keep changing it up. All right. That's right. I'm going to try it too. And when, when I write with your opposite hand, with, drive a different way home. Well, no one's driving right now, but uh, if you were driving, you would, could take a different route. Oh, well, okay. That's easy. I got inspired by listening to a Reggie Watts thing about that. Apparently he just does that stuff all the time. Interesting. It was like change, change like stupid little things about his routine. I'm going to try that. 
But that and being said, that being said, I appreciate all of you. Thank you, Ryan, for a wonderful conversation. It was so much fun today. I enjoyed it. Right? I did. I enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to many more podcasts with you. And just so everyone knows, next week's podcast, we have musical guest and singer. Oh, no, you froze. Oh, no. Okay, I stopped. Did I blank out? Yeah, one, one more time. Who is our musical guest? I cut off there. Our musical guest for next week is Neosha. She will be joining us for our podcast. And so we are looking forward to speaking with her and asking the question, how do artists raise a family? Ooh, kids and stuff. Kids and stuff and all that good stuff in between. Nice. Well, nice. I would like to thank everyone again for joining us and we will see you next week. See you next week. Thank you.